As a continuation of the previous section, we're going to look at turfgrass selection establishment as it applies primarily to golf courses. When deciding on a turfgrass species and cultivars to use, identifying the desired turf quality and the environmental conditions present are critical in selecting a species. Adaptation characteristics are extremely important. If the environment is high in salt, for example, we would look for a turf grass that has a high salt tolerance. Selection of adapted species alone does not guarantee success of the turf. Proper cultural practices are also required. Associated with turf grass selection are the terms blends and or mixes. It is common to establish cool season turf grasses as blends or mixes. Blends are two or more cultivars of the same species. Mixes are two or more turf grass species. Blends should have three to five unrelated cultivars to ensure adequate diversity. Warm season turf grasses are generally incompatible. In other words, they are planted as an individual population, like Bermuda grass or seashore paspalum. This picture shows a seashore paspalum fairway and rough. The architect tried to add definition to the course by adding a different warm season turf grass to the rough, in this case centipede grass. It turned out to be a disaster, in part because they are incompatible. We will focus on seeding and to some degree on sodding and plugging. Sprigging is covered in the following section. Prior to seeding, the site needs to be properly prepared. An overview of the steps that were mentioned in the previous section are listed here. The best time to seed depends on whether the turf grass is a cool season or warm season species. For cool season turf grasses, in our area is between August 15th and September 15th. At this time, cool season turf grasses are more competitive. Warm season weeds like crabgrass are at the end of their life cycle. And for germinating cool season turf grasses, soil temperatures are still warm enough without the summer heat that is intolerant for cool season turf grasses to establish. What about spring seeding? It is possible, but this is not the ideal time and is often difficult. Common mistakes are that soil temperatures are low or cold and the seed is slow, if at all, to germinate. Oftentimes reseeding occurs. Spring is the time summer annual grassy weeds are germinating like crabgrass. These weeds can rapidly crowd out and outcompete new turf seedlings. And finally, going into summer, the turf seedlings and juvenile plants are especially susceptible to the environmental stresses like high temperatures and fluctuation of moisture levels. Seeding laid into the fall increases the likelihood that if seed germinates, that the seedlings may not mature enough to withstand winter weather conditions. In these cases, covering the turf to trap heat under the cover promotes growth. Dormant seeding occurs for cool season turf grasses in late fall. Temperatures are too cold for germination, thus the name dormant seeding. The seeds will germinate the following spring when conditions are suitable. The issues with this type of seeding is that if late fall germination would occur, the seedlings would most likely be killed with the arrival of winter. The exposure of the seeds may result in loss due to birds winter feeding on the seed, or if the surface becomes too wet or saturated, seed rotting could occur. In general, dormant seeding works little less than 50% of the time. Normally, you will need to plan on a spring seeding to compensate for the failure of the dormant seeding. The time to seed warm season turf grasses is almost the opposite of cool season. Warm summertime temperatures promote seed germination. Seeding often occurs during early summer. The seeding rate for turf grasses varies depending on seed size. A common management fault is to seed at a higher rate than necessary, which is a waste of money and also results in excessive competition that delays establishment. From a practical standpoint, calibrating seeding equipment is important.
Listed here are two warm season turf grasses that are seeded. There is one more species, which I forgot to list in this table, seashore paspalum, specifically the variety sea spray that can also be seeded. From a practical standpoint, Bermuda grass is the primary warm season turf grass that is seeded for high maintenance turf situations. Bermuda grass seed can come as hold or unhold. Hold means the outer seed coat has been scarified or removed that allows the seed to germinate more quickly. This seed would be used when you are seeding during the ideal time of early to midsummer. The unhulled Bermuda grass seed is the natural Bermuda grass seed that contains the outer coating. This seed would be used if, for example, you seed it in the fall. You would let Mother Nature do the scarifying and the Bermuda grass would germinate when conditions were favorable. Zoysia grass requires seed treatment to break its coating to germinate. Zoysia grass too has a slow and inhibiting germinating rate. The germination rate of untreated dormant zoysia grass seed is less than 10% while seed chemically scarified with potassium hydroxide has a germination rate as high as 90%. With regard to the reason for differences in seeding rate, it's due to the seed size. In all seedings, we are looking to establish 1,000 to 2,000 seedlings per square foot. The seed label is important to understand and will be covered in a future section. Once seeding commences, make sure the prepared site has received a starter fertilizer, which is a small amount of fertilizer applied and incorporated into the seed bed prior to seeding. Other corrections to the seedbed can be made based on soil test reports like adjusting the soil pH. Apply the recommended seeding rate, normally split in half and applied in two different directions, which reduces the chance for skips. The rule of thumb is to make sure you have good seed soil contact. To enhance seed soil contact, rolling the seeded area to press the seed into soil contact should be done. For greens, a common practice is to run a sand trap rake shown here in the background that has perforated tires over the seeded area to push the seed into contact with the root zone mix. Looking closely, you can see the perforated small square indentations made by the tires. Here's a close-up of new seedlings emerging. Interestingly, they are mostly in those perforated tire indentations. The next few slides are just a progression in the seeding germination process. Once the seedlings are up, post-seeding procedures include watering lightly. Mowing should commence when one-third of the leaf blade would be removed. Nitrogen is applied frequently to promote growth and continue watering. Before moving on to sodding, I wanted to mention hydroseeding, which is seeding an area with a combination of water, seed, and mulch substance like paper. Hydro seeding has been used extensively for seeding mine reclamation sites in large areas that need a turf cover. This photograph shows a hydro seeder in operation. Here is a close up of a hydro seeded area. The bluish color is the mulch, and if you look closely, you can see the seed. Hydro seeding, or as it is often referred to as hydraulic mulch seeding, is used on golf courses to establish large areas. Sodding is a quick means of establishing turf grasses. Sodding is a vegetative establishment method. Cool season turf grass sod fields are established by seeding. The turf, once established and mature, is cut. The process of producing sod once the sod field is established is shown here in the following slides. Actually, this is how it was done 60 years ago. The previous and following photographs are from around Santiago, Chile. In this photograph, the worker is running a sod cutter 
which cuts the sod in such a way as not to remove too much soil. The sod sections are cut with a spade to a given length. Here is a sod section being held up by this worker. The sod sections are then rolled and loaded for delivery. This whole operation is family run and is extremely labor intensive. This is also a sod field in Chile. Mechanization has taken over much of the labor of cutting sod. Here this tractor is cutting the sod and is being stacked by a worker. Now the new equipment that has emerged has eliminated all handling of the sod, requiring only an operator to run the cutting operation. Once cut, it is delivered to its final destination. Listed here are some advantages to sod. The big advantage you can have is an instant lawn, for example, or turf area. Sodding can be done for the most part any time of the year that sod is available. Compared to seeding, sodding is much more expensive and labor intensive. Where sodding is done on newly constructed golf courses and in areas where water or erosion is of concern, or here the first cut of rough and around bunkers. But if money is not a factor and time is, large areas can be sodded too. For traditional sod cutting previously shown, the dimensions and thickness of a standard sod piece is given, but can vary. Sometimes squares are cut, for example. The second type of sodding with a traditional cut is termed soilless sod. This is sod that is either the soil washed off the pieces or more likely grown on plastic. Soilless sod is an attempt to eliminate any problems associated with laying sod with soil that does not match the root zone. A mismatch in soil type can impact root growth and water movement among other problems that occur with layering. Here is a recently sodded area of traditional sod. Soilless sod looks like this, void of soil. This sod is creeping bent grass and is destined for a sodding a green. Management of soilless sod during establishment is difficult. Since there is no soil, the water holding capabilities of the sod is extremely low. So proper watering to prevent drying or desiccation is critical during establishment. Large roll sod is the same as regular sod, but as seen here, the rolls are much bigger. In this case, this is a large roll sod of Bermuda grass that was grown on plastic. So in this case, it is also soilless. That large roll soilless sod of Bermuda grass is being laid here on a football field in Virginia. A version of large roll sod is thick cut sod. As you can imagine, you are not going to lift this sod and carry it off. The sod is cut in large sections with a significant soil layer. These large rolls of sod are almost exclusively used on sports fields. The advantage of thick cut sod is that you can replace a football field, for example, in less than a week. And since it is so heavy and thick, little give or slippage occurs, allowing for a game to be played almost immediately. The next series of pictures is the reestablishment or resurfacing of Ohio Stadium that occurred prior to the use of artificial turf. Here they are stripping the old field, watering prior to laying of the sod, and now the process itself. In the sports field management course taught by Pam Sherritt, she discusses these big roll instant turf fields in more detail. After siding, it is critical to water properly to keep the soil moist. Once the sod roots, the management becomes more like that of a mature turf. I am just going to mention plugging as an established method briefly. On golf courses, plugging is usually a repair process for small areas. 
The most popular or visible means of plugging is done with zoysia grass. Years ago, you would read a Sunday newspaper advertisement to buy zoysia plugs to plant in your lawn, and over time, you would end up with a zoysia grass lawn. Now you can find and purchase plugs on the internet. This is a home lawn in Champaign, Illinois, where a zoysia grass lawn was established with plugs purchased through the mail. The picture was taken in spring. This concludes the section on turf selection and establishment. In the following section, the establishment method of sprigging, which is used primarily for warm season turf grasses, is discussed.